In early November 1961, the Secretary of Defense, with Atomic Energy Commission concurrence, directed the activation of Joint Task Force 8 to prepare for a nuclear test series in the Pacific. This series, if conducted, was to be known as Operation Dominic. By early April, the large military AEC Joint Task Force had been organized, manned, and had achieved operational readiness at its forward locations in the Pacific. On the 25th of April, two days after receipt of presidential directive to proceed with testing, the first airdrop of the series was made, just off Christmas Island. The decision to plan for the resumption of atmospheric testing was complicated by a basic problem, real estate. And if we talk at all, the historic site of earlier tests was ruled out because of political considerations. Christmas Island, which the British had used for their nuclear test series ending in 1958, was under tentative consideration. Initial plans were drawn up for a series of airdrops of the nuclear devices over the open sea south of Hawaii, which would be observed by an aerial and shipborne instrument array. An aircraft carrier and two other naval vessels were modified and equipped to function as diagnostic instrumentation platforms. All related preparations proceeded. However, planning was accomplished so as to permit a shift to Christmas Island if that should become feasible. On 8 February 1962, an agreement was reached with Great Britain on the use of the island. Therefore, plans for the open sea concept of testing were set aside and Christmas Island became a principal base of operations for Dominic activities. Christmas Island two degrees above the equator. Discovered by Captain Cook on the 24th of December, 1777. It is a comparatively large island, in fact the largest atoll in the Pacific, with a land mass totaling 222 square miles. Road networks crisscross the island and innumerable lagoons dot the central portion. On the island are some 400 Gilbertese natives hired under contract to manufacture copra, and a land crab population impossible to tally. Christmas stayed in the shadows of World War II. Its primary function was as an element of the communications net for Pacific operations. Not until the United Kingdom nuclear tests of 1956, 1957, and 1958 did this atoll assume a stature unknown until then. Following the tests, it returned to its former status. An RAF station and a district commissioner in charge of Her Majesty's affairs. This was Christmas Island. 1962. The task force commander has asked me to brief you on the tests which made up this phase of the Dominic operation. They may be considered in several distinctive groups. The first of these was a proof test of devices from both of the AEC laboratories, Los Alamos and the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory, which had reached final weapon design during the test moratorium and were already in stockpile or scheduled for stockpile in the near future. Notice that proof test as used here 
refers merely to the test of nuclear components of a weapon, as distinguished from a foolproof test of an actual weapon in service form and environment. In another category were tests of complete nuclear weapon systems, which we will say more about shortly. And a third category of tests in the Christmas Island phase of Dominic were tests of advanced concepts in weapons design, relatively highly experimental designs proposed by both weapon laboratories. This, in general, was the device schedule for the airdrop test phase of Dominic. The chain of events leading to each airdrop in the series began here, at Naval Air Station Barber's Point on the island of Oahu. In this area, each device was inspected and checked, its complex telemetry calibrated, and finally loaded aboard one of the two B-52 aircraft. The airdrops were made off the southeast shoreline of Christmas Island. Basic diagnostics data were recorded by instrumentation at various ground stations on Christmas Island. At A site, MM site, Y site, and D site. Key diagnostics instrumentation was oriented toward zero point to record the phenomena associated with each test. This instrumentation was housed in specially designed trailers, many of which were the same units that had been prepared in the initial test planning phase for operation aboard ship in the open sea test concept. An extensive airborne array also took part in both the diagnostic studies and certain effects tests. As in other nuclear test operations, B-57 sampler aircraft were used to obtain particulate and gaseous samples from within the cloud for radiochemical analysis to determine the yield for each weapon. Two especially modified C-130s served as platforms for additional diagnostic data gathering. High-speed cameras aboard these aircraft measured the fireball as a function of time to provide data on total yield and other instrumentation recorded data on internal device behavior to verify weapon physics. There were control aircraft to position others in the array. Search and rescue. Photographic. Patrol planes to provide surface security around the test area. And other aircraft critically positioned around the zero point to study thermal radiation radar attenuation and chorioretinal effects. Originally conceived essentially to supplement the ground instrumentation and for trial of airborne methods, the airborne instrumentation scheme used in this operation developed into a highly successful primary diagnostic technique. In the 78-day period between 25 April and 12 July, 24 weapon development shots were fired at the Christmas Island site. All drops were on target and within the precise time and space limitations established by the requirements of diagnostic instrumentation. This reflected an outstanding feat of professional airmanship on the part of the B-52 crews. On all occasions, the fusing and firing system worked perfectly and the device telemetry provided almost complete data on the functioning of these elements. Weather conditions at Christmas Island proved to be quite favorable for this operation. For the planned total of 24 airdrops, there were only three occasions when scheduled operations were postponed in advance for 24 hours because of unfavorable forecasts, and it was necessary for the B-52 to return to base with the device on board on only eight missions. 
In summary, no significant delays in scheduled operations were experienced because of unfavorable weather. During the Christmas Island phase, a tremendous amount of data was gathered. Much of this is still being reduced and correlated, but preliminary indications have emerged quite plainly. The Dominic Developmental Series has made a substantial contribution to our nuclear weapon knowledge. It has provided the proof test of nuclear designs for which we have immediate need and has opened avenues for newer and still further design improvements, which will be needed for weapon systems soon to come into service. It has yielded major new weapon effects information, and it has proved the possibility of securing the most necessary diagnostic data by a combination air-land operation, and has shown that an airborne diagnostic operation has great promise for future tests.